um, Annabelle Ross, who's been covering a lot of the more um, unsavory uh, things concerning dance music, has put together uh, an article here on Medium, um, essentially giving her opinion on what has been going on. And it's pretty interesting to hear her side of things and to see how she basically views it as somebody who kind of covers dance music and the people that are involved in it, you know, on the on a journalistic point of view. So I'll read a bit. I highlighted some sections that I want to basically talk about, but the title of it is The Good, the Bad and the Ugly, What Peggy Goo Fora Says About the Electronic Music Pandemic of Misogyny, which obviously you can find on Medium, and I'll put the link um, at the bottom as well whilst you guys are, if you're watching it now, but I'll read it through the bits I've highlighted and we can kind of go on from there. So, um, one bit here I've highlighted, it says the following, da -da -da -da, zoom in a bit there, boom. It says, um, Danny Wang's Facebook post um, this week describing his elation at the fact that Peggy Gu had moved out of his Berlin apartment building and the online response to it was further study, uh, was a further uh, of it, was a further study in the ingrained misogyny. Today, 11,000 people have liked Wang's um, laundry list of Gu's crimes, spanning her excessive makeup and perfume, um, expensive designer clothes and hundreds of pairs of shoes, her alleged ghost producing, her kleptomania and a mental illness, um, playing play graves, planning to donate large sums of money to the club whose part owner produces her merch, her obsession with Instagram, and lots more. Danny Wang has 55,000 Facebook friends and 705,000 followers on the platform. Um, again, the ingrained misogyny thing, I don't really think I agree with just because of the... I, I can't count, I'm not going to go back and count it, but I do remember when the whole Eric Mueller story came out, it was quite concerning to see it quite a lot of women who are fans of him coming out and supporting him and saying, hey, um, the stories, you know, the, the stories from the accusers are bullshit, questioning her, their motives and essentially just excusing everything that was coming out about Eric Murillo. Um, you didn't see that, you didn't see that so much with uh, Derek May, don't get me wrong, but I did see a lot of women coming out supporting Eric Murillo. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a gendered thing. I think it's more so a reflection of society. There's just a prevalence or there's just not prevalence i think there's a uh there's something about us where if somebody has some sort of um position some sort of clout some sort of reverence notoriety wealth position power whatever it may be in a particular scene in a particular industry especially the, the more niche it is the worse i'd imagine i'd imagine the cases of like abuse in communities such as like magic the card gathering or something like that would be really high right i think the smaller the niche is um the more elated the people in positions are in power right they're sort of like way up here to the people that are down there and they could usually get away with murder so i think it happens in all scenes in my opinion and if that's the case and i don't think it's a misogyny thing, i just think it's a scene it's a toxic scene thing because some of the responses are so again on the, the eric Mueller stuff were coming from men and women all over the world right some people who i'm sure had family members that were victims of abuse who were excusing everything he was doing so that was odd continuing by comparison the article posted over at the uh over the past months or so on facebook by mix mag um 1.9 million facebook followers resident advisor six half a million facebook followers DJ Mag, 3.5 million followers about the decade spanning sexual assaults by the hugely successful DJ Eric Miller and Derek May, um, as told by multiple victims, have received no more than 500 likes each, which is understandable, right? No one wants to. I think now, especially now, because of the so, because it's such a been such a shit year, I, I don't think people are not engaging with that content or with those reports or with those exposés because they don't care. I think it's just because you know the last thing people want is to be, uh, you know, subjecting themselves to that level of negative not say negativity you don't you just don't want to hear more bad news right you're already having a bit of a shitty year as it is globally we're all having a bad one i just think that's the case and i think this is just such a nonsense story it's such a frivolous argument that people just want to see it's car crash tv and it? it's kind of the equivalent of an argument you'd see on love island so it's, it's no you know i'm sure the love island arguments get a lot more traction than the story about prince andrew supposedly being a nonce do you know what i mean i think that's the same sort of example it continues the fact that wang's post received 22 times as many likes as a sexual assault story speaks volumes about what people and mostly men see as the most pressing threat in the industry not the ongoing abuse of fans of women but the unfair success of one again i don't think necessarily think that's true i think no one likes unf no, no one likes yeah that we don't I think society in general just yeah no one actually likes somebody that doesn't appear to have success that they deserve 
no one likes cheaters it's just something that's ingrained in us right you go to someone's house and you play a board game and someone's cheating regardless if you're just mucking around it's not cool right you, you're gonna be you, you're, you're gonna be in a bit of a mood you might get in an argument you might even get physical no one likes cheaters so if 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 anyone can feel like somebody's being inauthentic or not being true or the story is somehow a lie it can necessarily it can really damage that person and it also can change the perception of them um greatly which is why a lot of you know celebrities and public figures go out of their way to correct stories that they feel are going to be paint them in a way that's going to paint them out to be dishonest in some regard right they kind of you know which is probably why trump came up with the term fake news you don't want people to think that you're a liar um you don't want people to think that you misrepresented yourself you want people to somehow um side with your version of events which is why people go out of their way to correct those sort of stories so i don't think i think that's the case in that regard and again i just think people i don't think again i don't think it's a men and women thing i just think industry wise as a scene there is a real big problem with dealing with issues you look at stuff that happened with race right look at stuff that happened with the school the school had a really really like bad case of what looks like um discrimination at the door accounts from people who you know span race different racial backgrounds sexual orientations coming forward and saying hey this club is toxic the bouncers are you know saying some wild shit at the door you know um putting people in really awkward and bad situations abuse is happening and it's all handled, happening under the watch supposedly of the management of that club and you know they just completely ignored it they sort of gaslighted it in some respects and then in the end instead of dealing with it head on it just closed the club right <laughs> so i think as a scene that was a really good example of just how bad we deal with things in general forget men and women forget whatever i just think anything that goes outside of people playing music at clubs we just have no real way of actually dealing with it as a collective um and I, again i just don't know what it is like but there's definitely an issue there regarding it um but i just don't think it's gendered it continues i don't necessarily think that wang is a misogynist but the language in the post certainly is as well as being ableist and the fact that he was allowed um, and even encouraged uh so much uh, flagrant sexism and misogyny in responses to his diatribe severely undermines his argument that he is an ally for women hold on so read that again and the fact that he has allowed and encouraged so much flagrant sexism and misogyny okay so that's a bit i have a problem too i think there's a, obviously a reply there from vakula and i think i mentioned before if vakula's on your side you know that's probably you probably know you maybe need to back out in it it's sort of the equivalent of like mm -hmm. you know someone like a cernovich retweeting something that you post on twitter you don't really want that or like a milo you or something it's just that those sort of like toxic individuals are probably not a good represent are probably not a good um co-signers for your argument so when he sort of just he, when he didn't sort of uh pull yeah, when he when he didn't call out Vakula when he basically started off his sentence by saying that he smashed Peggy Goo and that's why he knows that she's this and that. That was when he sort of lost me. I was like, okay, this guy's on a mad one. He's willing to sort of indulge Vakula in his um, blatant disregard for these women and what they've done in the scene just so he can further cement or kind of valid validate his argument. That's obviously not cool. But the ableism thing, I'm not really sure about because i tried to look that up right and again from what i from what i saw online it does say that ableist language mostly pertains to people with disabilities right it says ableist language is a language that um is offensive to people with disability it can also refer to language that is derogatory abusive negative about disability ableism is the systemic exclusion of oppression of people with disability often expressed and reinforced through language so I don't see how that's ableist because no one in this conversation is disabled from what I know physically anyway. Um, maybe it's more of a sentence regarding, maybe it's more of a phrase used to like say, oh, you are, you're basically, she's basically enabling creeps to come out and, you know, uh, discriminate or, you know, throw mud against women in general. I don't know. Maybe that's the case. But if you guys know what that term is and I'm reading it wrong, because I didn't understand what the being ableist meant when no one's actually disabled. But anyway, we, we continue. Um, there seems to be a several other accounts supporting the idea that Gu has been unpleasant and even abusive. You would hope that such behavior would lead to people deciding not to work with her, which would diminish her power in the industry as word of her poor character spread. Not true. Of course, as we know, Eric May, um, Derek May, sorry, Eric Muller, loads of 
of other people in the scene too who have basically gotten away with murder because they occupy a certain level in the scene and also to be completely honest i think the scene has a lot to blame as well for peggy Goo's apparent big-headedness right she does she thinks that shit doesn't stink because the scene enabled it right the scene basically propped her up chucked all loads of money at her gave her all the opportunities under the sun um you know selected her as the next big superstar and now they're all surprised that she's somehow acting out and being a diva you know you made your bed you've got to lay in it it continues her performances at playgraves especially considering her wealth and a dodgy planned donation from jägermaster for whom gao um, Gu was a brand ambassador to, to sub club um whose part owner um, usman kushi was 100 percent owner of the girls merch company were rightly criticized mate just imagine right if um sven var did that if richie horton richie horton's already have a little bit of a bad reputation with some of his um brand deals that he's sort of associated with just imagine if a story came out richie horton did what peggy did with the Eager Master. bloody hell so there, there is some level of there is some level of difference when it comes to reporting issues between men and women in the scene but by and large you know the people the higher up they go the more uh, unscrupulous they are really d regardless of gender it just is what it is i guess i don't know why but i think you know sometimes in this scene money begets more dickedness it continues but this story is much bigger than peggy Goo. bad behavior mistreatment of people or fake talent it's about the language used in the post the palpable the palpable glee sorry of uh, the mostly male respondents as they sought to tear her down and the fact that so many of them are chomping at the bit to attack Goo, but won't say a word about the industry's worst kept secret the rampant abuse of women agree with that one i think that's been the most concerning part of it again fair enough she might be a bitch she might be you know annoying she might be a bit entitled spoiled and whatever she is but still the level of energy people are putting towards tearing her down um i don't see the same amount of energy being brought towards the stories concerning eric Miller and derek may and especially considering that they're not even like this the concerning thing for me i'm not going to mention other names but there's far more popular techie housey you know um ambient melodic house djs that exist deep house djs that exist right um so you think to yourself if people are willing to defend and excuse the behavior of eric merlo and derek may imagine what they would say about god forbid a seth truxler right um a tale of us um some people from the inner visions imagine like if they're willing to die on the derek may eric merlo hill imagine what they do for those kind of guys that's a concerning part of it so again yes is she a bad person is she a unpleasant person to hang around with quite possibly but come on let's put things in perspective a little bit mate let's put things in perspective a little bit continues wang has sought to defend himself against um, some of the distractors but his post especially the original one uh, before criticism caused him to edit to do some edits i didn't know about that was equally as troubling as Goose legend malfe malfeance i tried my best he says here to, to be nice to her ignoring the outfits <laughs> of escada mixed with supreme on top of tommy hilfiger anything with a pricey label he's such a cunt in it the bad makeup and overpowering perfume red alerts for mental illness hello um he wrote he later said that he was merely uh painting a picture of her hysteronic personality disorder where we are yet to see a diagnosis from a psychiatrist of course but it came across as a petty assault of her appearance scent and clothes he shared the anecdote about her alleged theft of an eames chair while acknowledging that it might be the result of a mental health disorder he reported that an old friend said that he could that he could tell her he could tell me who really produced her releases going on to say i haven't verified that then takes a shot at her djing via bergheim booker who supposedly told him peggy goo was nothing like what we expected we will all certainly never book her again again it's your fault why is bergheim booking the dj that just started playing in 2017 your problem um everyone sort of again I, I really dislike this area everyone was a friend when it was cool but now that this guy said this stuff all of a sudden she's the enemy of the scene it's all nonsense you enabled it you encouraged it and now that someone's speaking out you're suddenly having the courage to stand behind him and again you're standing behind him and the abuse that she's getting online it's not on now part of me also thinks i think about a little bit like like i think i never was posted something else so she's my exchange with daniel wang i think to myself like is he mentally ill does he have like an actual issue that he's actually suffering from or is he going through an episode that we don't know about behind the scenes maybe or i was actually thinking to myself you know what this is actually quite a um he's actually alienated himself somewhat from the industry because if you think about it none of the big platforms like ra dj mag or mixed mag have posted anything 
about this whole ordeal or argument. None of them, right? They're all putting their head in the sand because essentially they've all got deals in place with the agencies that she's signed to. Is it Liaison Arts, whatever it's called, right? Um, agencies she's with that represents mad different people. It's got everyone from DJ High to Gerd Janssen to loads of other people on that label. It's even people like Taylor Vassar on there, right? So there's a lot of, they have a lot of connections in the scene. So they're obviously avoiding upsetting anybody. So they haven't covered it. RA Mix Mag DJ Mag. So if you're if you're Daniel Wang, you're probably doing you're probably doing the worst thing possible for your career by saying this about Peggy because she's got a lot more. Even though he's been in the scene for like what twenty five plus years in the industry, she seems to have a lot more influence behind the scenes than he does. Even though she's only been professionally DJing since two thousand seventeen or whatever it may be. So again, maybe it's meant. Maybe he's actually going through a mental episode, or maybe he's just willing to just burn the ships right he doesn't really care he's gonna burn every bridge that he can because he doesn't see any way out of the situation he's in at the moment i don't know but that got me thinking continuing one of her shocking offenses while working in a record store in berlin was to take a picture of herself among the record bins and upload on instagram wang was a particularly outraged by good contributes to a late mike huckabee and andrew everall in which he was saying how much they admired her as a dj that's mentally ill first of all it's a massive stretch to assign her comments and mental illness secondly if you read Goose post sorry she says um many kind things about both men uh, before expressing how much um their support meant to her she says back in 2015 her caption says um um, he said he liked my voice and asked me to speak on my life with um, the Wave Love Volume 2. This is a privilege that will stay with me forever. She wrote of Mike Huckabee. Of Andrew Everall, she said he also complimented on one of my mixes that was only a few years ago, but it meant so much to me and encouraged me to be um, to an extent I will never forget. I don't detect any mental illness in these words. Of course not. Um, again, RIP Andrew Everall, um, you know, gone way, way, way too soon. One of the many tragedies of this year, definitely a legend in London. Um, but there is something kind of weird about somebody paying tribute to somebody that passed and also inserting their own personal anecdote in there. Um, I think back to a post um, that young Dolph did when Nipsey Hussle passed away. Do you remember that? When Nipsey Hussle passed away due to, you know, an unfortunate shooting outside of his um store. Um, young Dolph made some weird pose where he was essentially standing on a car, some Lamborghini truck or something, and he said like, Oh, uh, rest in peace, Nipsey or something. And it was and he was like, you know, he was in like some yellow Lamborghini with a matching outfit and all these jewels on and shit. And it was just like, What are you doing? Are you praising Nipsey or are you taking the opportunity to show off your fit? and your level of wealth it's just so bizarre that sort of thing. and people do that often it's, it's a kind of a unfortunate consequence of social media where people sort of kind of put them you know you see a lot when people are sharing tragic stories right someone sharing a tragic story about something you know really really bad that they went through in their life and how they've kind of seen you know they've kind of um been able to uh get on get on the other side of it and then somebody in the comments will share their really tragic story so they can kind of gain sympathy they can kind of draw sympathy away from the post that's above them it's very very bizarre I don't i don't really it's kind of equivalent to turning up to somebody's wedding you know and sort of like out trying to outdo the bride or the groom like it's their special day relax and take a seat so i think that was a bit odd but again i wouldn't it's you know put it to mental illness or just put it to being representation of the times we're living at the moment and then another one said da, 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 da. It's a quote from Wang who said something like, "Yes, I've yeah." This is the concerning bit again about Wang how he approached stuff. This is a, his his response to the whole um, Derek May stories that came out. Right, he says, "Yes, I've read about." and spoken with women who were assaulted by Derek May, but I have no personal contact or experience with him, so I support the victims, but I cannot speak to them. Based on what I've heard, I would guess that he is a true predator. I feel disgusted by the predators as you are. Let justice be served, smiley face. And yet when the news surfaced about Murillo and May and their many victims, Wang felt no such compulsion to share his disgust on Facebook or Instagram profile. That probably just says a lot more about who he is as a person, but also, I would kind of give him a bit of benefit of the doubt, a bit of a bly, just because he went through a personal experience with Peggy. However frivolous it is, he's obviously going to have a lot more to say about that than he is about something that happened that doesn't have nothing to do with him. But it is quite, you know, you have to give him a bit of a side eye to be like, how can you write 75 you know, paragraphs about a 27-year-old DJ, right? But you can't say something about people that you've probably interacted with in some way along the way, you know, in your industry, and they're kind of decade you know years of abuse that's a bit odd but you know 
what can you do another quote so to the responses of artists i respect including detroit born techno producer dj alan oldman which is another disappointing one someone i was delighted to interview earlier this year i've been bothered by his reaction to the Derek may allegations ranging from silence to support his longtime friend of may and the comments that he supported on wang's post were deeply disturbing he laughed at a guy who said i'd still hit that <laughs> of goo and that another guy who said classic minimal bitch i admired both wang and oldman as djs and producers until this week now with as many as men with as so many men in the scene who have revealed ugly sides of their character this year i just feel disappointed in them the Ella oldman thing is oh, is is a hard one isn't it because they're actually friends and i think the friend stuff is odd like i said before about eric Murillo, i do think it's bad taste for people to post eulogies about him when he passed especially considering the severity of the allegations and the um charges being brought against him I think there's a way to do it in a very tasteful and tactful way if you're actually friends with him. But like I maintain, I think a lot of people that are posting tributes to him weren't actually his friends. They were just doing it to clout chase. They wanted people to know that they were friends. People, if you remember, a lot of people were posting, you know, old black and white images or pictures from like point and shoots from back in the day in Ibiza so that people could know, oh, look, he was Eric Willow's friends back in the 90s, back in the 80s. So they can kind of show off who they kind of knew. And a lot of the pictures, I think some of the people as well, you saw pictures of him with other people. It wasn't only them to it was always be like another celebrity in the picture as well so it was kind of a bit of a clout thing but i think if you're actually his friend you owed him just a private acknowledgement a private remember like you don't need to tell the world that you're missing your friend and you're sad that he passed away so soon you you could easily reach out to the family you could support them anyway kind of in any way there needs to be i'm sure there was a private funeral wake held in his remembrance but I think the eulogization and then the excusing of his behavior by saying that he had demons was gr disgusting to the extreme. And um, I think if you're a victim of uh, that sort of abuse, seeing those sort of posts from people that you probably work with or people that you probably respect must have been really distressing for everybody involved in it. So I think that's hard. But again, when you're his friend, friend, I think you owe him a private, you know, acknowledgement of it, but you don't need to be putting that publicly, especially not in that manner. Um, again, I, I, the laughing and the, sort of like weird comments that he made at the bottom here again i just think it's a symptom of the scene i just think there's so many ugly parts of the scene that have been revealed during covid that are essentially um showing us that some of the people that we sort of exalt or put on a pedestal maybe we shouldn't we should maybe listen to these people's mixes maybe see them playing places but we shouldn't be ascribing any sort of um moral correctness or decent behavior in any way shape or form we shouldn't we just we enjoy their artistry in whatever form that they bring it to us and if we can separate the art and the artist you do that but to kind of accept them in totality is going to be very difficult especially considering some of the stuff they got up to this year i can definitely agree with that one and then the last quote here but Wang's claims that he has done um, nothing to be jealous of don't quite ring true. Gu probably made more money in one year than he did in 20 years of touring. He's certainly respected as an artist, but he may never receive a fraction of Gu's fame or fortune. Is that unfair? Maybe. Um, but what uh, Wang has incited makes him uh, no better than what he's accusing Gu of. His post and his response to it has simply reminded us yet again of how rampant misogyny is not seen. Again, I don't think that's true. I don't think it's a misogyny thing. I just think it's a shitty scene thing, toxic to the extreme. And the lack of self policing is also hurting it. I remember, it's a bad example, but I think the skateboarding is probably the best example I can make analogy, right? When I first got into it, right? Skateboarding always had this weird thing, especially when you go to the shops, it always kind of vibe you out. Right, it always sort of like haze you in a little bit to kind of ensure that you were there for the right reasons. And then once you got in, you were in, right? And you kind of had this global connection with people, with kids and people all over the world, right? It was this one thing that you could kind of be connected with. You bring a board to a local skate sport, a local skate park, a local spot, and you instantly become friends with people that cover, you know, all different parts of the globe, all different races, all different sexual orientations, all that, all that good stuff, isn't it? Um. But a lot of the reason why I think skateboarding didn't suffer, didn't kind of uh, suffer the same fate as like rollerblading, I think for the most part was that self-policing in the beginning, that sort of really boys clubby sort of attitude, right? Even in the beginning, girls weren't really treated that well in skateboarding either. But now you see loads of pro skateboarding girls, crews, uh, videos being put out, you know, sponsorships. Like it's just a thing. No one really bats an eyelid anymore. And um, even the fact that, you know, before you'd be called when, you know, if you were somebody like myself and you were skateboarding, you'd be called a white boy. Now there's loads of kids that are, you know, no, loads of non-white kids out there and adults who are deciding to go out there and skateboard. It's become just a, um, 
probably the only true subculture really and to some level to some extent and a lot of the reasons because of that really tight-knit community in the beginning that sort of made sure they kept the outsiders out um but i think in electronic music especially in dance music scene the moment the money started coming in from the big corporate brands it immediately diluted whatever we had and it invited some very unscrupulous characters it encouraged some very um in it, you know some very questionable actions and directions which is why we end up in a situation where we're in now where essentially somebody like a peggy who's only been playing since 2017 is somehow out earning somebody like a daniel wang who's been in this industry for 25 plus years so to say that it's not unfair it definitely is unfair don't get me wrong but life is right it, life is unfair but it definitely is unfair and you can definitely understand why somebody of daniel wang's position would feel a little bit aggrieved by it but again, I think it's a symptom of the scene. We essentially made this that way. We fucked it up. We are the ones that sort of left it to its own devices and allowed people in that shouldn't be in. Like I think back to the beginning of the of the of the lockdown when the Disc Woman Collective were trying to um, crowdfund uh, donations in order to support their artists because a lot of them had gigs cancelled. I think this might have been early before COVID, before lockdowns actually came into place, maybe March or something, February. The, um, Disc Woman put out like a fundraiser post somewhere, right? And they got so much stick for it. The comments were horrible um, about them trying to raise funds for you know support, obviously the people on their label and stuff. And you think to you and you feel yourself like, then a few months later passes by and you have all these big DJs going out, putting out posts and Kickstarters and funds together to support tour managers. And then look at the response to this. It's just like, there is something about the scene in general that doesn't support the, in the people involved who are actually doing the great work, who are uplifting marginalized voices, who are, you know, supporting the local community, local scene in a meaningful way. It just doesn't happen. And I don't know what it is. Um, again, I think we've, we've let in way too many unscrupulous characters from the outside. But I think, again, we are to blame for a lot of the things that are happening now at the scene. We are definitely to blame as a collective. We can't just point fingers and attribute it to one person because I think that's completely unfair. But... Again, who knows how this is going to end. This is the article there to end there regarding the good, the bad and the ugly with Peggy Goo. Uh, Foro says about electronic music's pandemic of misogyny written by Annabelle Ross. Again, I'll put it in the show notes for you guys to check out yourself. But it's a really good article regardless. Um, some really cool points made. I disagree with a few of them here and there, but um, it'll be interesting to see what happens next year. Does this actually change anything? <laughs> Will this allow different people to play in different places? Oh, we just continue as we were prior. I think nothing will change personally because human nature mate human bloody nature